It's my favorite time of year. The leaves are starting to change colors. Your favorite stores are starting to put out holiday decorations. And we get to show off our cutest scarves and boots. Welcome and welcome back to another episode of Double Helping. Today we're going to show you how to make some of our favorite fall treats. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Caramel popcorn. Hey y'all, it's Lonnie. So let's go ahead and get started. For this treat, I went ahead and added two cups of popcorn kernels to the popcorn maker. But don't worry if you don't have a popcorn maker, you can just use uh, bag popcorn or you can do stove top. Um, just as long as it's fresh, that's the only thing that matters. So I'm bringing two cups of coconut almond milk to a boil. I am adding one cup of coconut sugar. You can substitute for brown sugar or whatever alternative. Um, whisk for five minutes or until the sugar is completely melted. And I would suggest using a silicone whisk to avoid any damage to your cookware. Look how beautifully the two are mixing together. So now adjust your heat to medium because we wanna bring this to a rolling boil. Add half a teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of arrowroot powder. You can substitute for a different thickener like tapioca. Vigorously whisk this together. Reduce your heat to the simmer because we don't want to burn your sauce. Now that everything has melted and mixed together, we're gonna let this cool and it will thicken as it cools. If there are any lumps and bumps, you can use a drink blender to get it smooth. Now we're gonna make sure we're covering our popcorn with our beautiful caramel sauce. It's not gonna be soggy or anything like that. It's gonna get nice and crisp when we put it in the oven. So I can see this at a fall festival or cozying up to a movie on the couch. It's going to be a hit. Who needs Cracker Jacks or Fiddle Faddle when you have this? If you wanted to do something similar, you could add peanuts for an extra crunch. Now that our caramel sauce has been distributed evenly on our popcorn, we're gonna pop this into the oven, which I've preheated on 300 degrees. And it's gonna go for about 30 minutes. At the halfway point, we're just gonna mix this together. And then it'll go for the remaining 15 minutes. Pumpkin muffin tops. I've added two cups of all-purpose flour to my dry ingredient bowl. This is gonna yield about 30 to 36 pumpkin muffin tops, depending on your scoop size. I'm adding one teaspoon baking soda one teaspoon of baking powder, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, three-fourths teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I'm adding three because I'm using one-fourth of a teaspoon measuring spoon. And I actually added more nutmeg because I love nutmeg so much. Three-fourths teaspoon of ground ginger. So cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger are like the holy trinity to me, kind of like the onion, bell pepper, and celery mix. And lastly, I'm adding half a teaspoon of sea salt to our dry ingredient bowl. For our wet ingredient bowl, I'm adding half a cup of softened butter. Make sure you give it time to soften up. I'm using just regular butter, but you can use any alternative of your choosing. We do want to remember that we're going to be yielding about 30 to 36 muffin tops. So the butter will be spread out um, and just remember portion control. So depending on what your goals are, that's going to be different for each person. Adding one and a half cups of brown sugar to the mix. You can substitute with dark brown coconut sugar or whatever you choose. This is one cup of canned pumpkin puree. Be mindful not to use the canned pumpkin pie mix, which, ha which has added sugars. So this is the Simple Truth from Kroger. Um, it's the same price as Libby's, which I know a lot of people use. It was just $1.89. 
we know Simple Truth is organic and has nothing else in it. So that's why I chose that. Y'all, the aroma from mixing this batter is going to make your home smell so good. So let's go ahead and add one large egg. The first time that I made this recipe, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make like six, you know, a small amount because I really don't wanna make that many. But once I made that six, um, I really wish that I had made more. I will list the smaller portion measurements for the pumpkin muffin tops in the description down below. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract to your wet ingredient bowl. And I'm gonna mix this all together off camera. But make sure that you slowly mix your dry ingredients to your wet to avoid a big dust cloud. Okay, so it's looking good, it's tasting good, it's definitely smelling good. And I did end up adding one fourth cup of coconut milk because I didn't want the batter to be too thick. It needs to look like this consistency and be very moist. This is a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop. If you don't have one, you can use two tablespoons worth of batter to form each muffin top. A cookie scoop is supposed to make things easier, but I think sometimes they get in the way. I've lined my cookie sheet with some unbleached parchment paper, and I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees. I'm just gonna dab my muffin tops with plain water to smooth out the edges and flatten the centers because these are going to rise. Now we're gonna bake these for about 15 to 20 minutes and we're gonna rotate the pan halfway through to make sure that these bake evenly. After that, we're gonna finish off with a little bit of powdered sugar. I'll be right back with the finished product. Apple Cider Sangria. For this treat, you wanna make sure that you're going to gather and slice one Honeycrisp apple, one pear, one Cara Cara orange, some grated ginger, and a thin slice of lemon. I actually put the ginger in the freezer so that it would make the grating process a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and add all of our ingredients to our pitcher. And now for the best part, we're gonna add one bottle of Prosecco. That was so satisfying. For an extra kick, you can add brandy or an alcohol of your choosing. Lastly, I'm adding one cup of club soda. Typically, people may use ginger beer, but the benefits of using club soda and fresh gin give you the same result, and we know it has no extra added sugar and no unnecessary chemicals or ingredients. You can garnish this with pomegranate seeds, cinnamon sticks, or star vanilla and make it look really, really pretty and dress it up. Enjoy! What's up YouTube fam, Mel here. Let's get started on our next recipe, which is gonna be spaghetti squash pasta. So I'm gonna take a medium spaghetti squash, cut it the long way, and place it on a baking tray. I'm gonna place it in the oven at 400 degrees for 45 minutes. While that's in the oven, I went ahead and I heated up a small saucepan on medium low heat, added a little bit of oil, and I'm chopping up six garlic cloves, half of a Vidalia onion, and five mini sweet peppers. Now off camera, I added in half of a pack of portobello mushrooms, and you're just gonna let this saute in your saucepan for about three minutes. Now 
Next, I'm adding in two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. I'm gonna salt and pepper to taste. Stir it up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and add in a pound of ground turkey. Then stir some more, make sure you get it evenly throughout. And then I'm adding in half a pack of uncured turkey sausage, one can of fire roasted tomatoes, and one can of tomato sauce with the basil, garlic, and oregano in it. And then we're just gonna cover this and let it simmer at that low medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then let's move on to making a salad. So I have the power greens mix with kale, chard, and spinach. I'm adding half of a gala apple, one fourth a cup of red onion, one third a cup of pecans, two ounces of blue cheese. And then next I wanted two ounces of dried unsweetened cranberries. However, the store was out of them, so I substituted them for raisins, which also was delicious. Let's make our dressing. So it's one third cup of balsamic vinegar, a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, salt and pepper to taste, add in one fourth teaspoon of garlic, and then a tablespoon of honey was added off camera and you just whisk and then you have our dressing. Next, let's move on to the spaghetti squash. So once that's complete, you'll just take it out of the oven, let it cool, then you can easily take a spoon, just scoop out your seeds. As you can see, they easily come out. And then you're just gonna take a fork and you're just gonna rake throughout the spaghetti squash. And it just comes out nice and stringy, just a beautiful pasta. And then there's our final product with your meat sauce on top of your spaghetti squash. It's so good. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so now you've seen our top five fall faves. If you enjoyed what you saw today, definitely like, subscribe to see future uploads, and comment below. Let us know what your favorite was and also what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.